Hello everyone, it's me, Nez. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I want to come on here today to kind of um, clear the air uh, concerning um, the old man, the new man, you know, as a believer, when we sin, who's sitting and um, who's responsible for the sin and um, and the this the illustration that is in my head um, I give well the first person that really explained it to me was um, our dear brother uh, who goes by the alias Oswald Cobblepot I love you brother if you're watching this I love you so much so he really explained it in one of his videos um, and um, he had a picture of like a, I think a stick figure picture, like two stick fi picture, um, stick figure men and he labeled one man the old, the old man and then the other one was like the new man um, and I don't know if it was the old man or the parlor man. I think is the old man and so it was just like illustrating you know we have an old nature and a new nature and as before you're born again all you are is the old man all you have is your sin nature but when you're born again the you know you have the new man which is a new creation and that man doesn't sin at all he is sinless right because he's created in Christ Jesus so I'm gonna read some scriptures and I I pray as we read it we'll have an understanding you know of you know where like where the line is drawn so that you're not confused you're not gonna be condemning yourself when you as a believer like when you sin you're not going to be like, this is me. You know, you're not going to embody your sin and, and claim it as your own. And, um, you know, this is, this is to help you know or reinforce your identity in Christ. You know, that you are brand new, pure, righteous, holy, through and through, you know, because of Jesus Christ, you know. Okay, so let's read from Romans chapter 6, okay, starting from verse 5. Okay, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, and then we could go up to verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So, um... Those who have believers in Jesus Christ who have believed the gospel of grace, um, which uh, speaks of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, all our sins, past, present, future. And he was buried, of course, and he resurrected. So the resurrection speaks of the life, the eternal life we have in Christ. Okay, 
and the life, you know, his life that we live. He lives his life through us, okay? And that life, it it does away with death. It cancels death, of course. You can't you can't be dead if you're alive, right? So in this passage, it's saying we died with Christ. And what died? It's our 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 flesh, our our sin nature. Um it died on the cross, you know. Sin was done away with in the body of Christ. You know, he became sin for us. He, he, he didn't know any sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be um, called the righteousness of um, God in Christ. I'm, I'm totally botch, <laughs> like botching that up. But he, you know, he became sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? So, no... When you realize this, when you know this, it's because it says, knowing this, that our old man, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we have been liberated from this, the sin nature that we used to have, that was, that was, that this flesh, the our flesh served our body was in bondage to sin, but because of Christ, because we are alive unto God, we are free from sin. You know, his resurrection power abides in us, okay? And it destroys uh, the, this body of sin with the flesh, with all its, you know, all its works, okay? So now let's go to Romans chapter 7, verse 18. For I know, this is Paul, but, right? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay. So you can see there, okay, well, let's go on into verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body, from the body of this death? I thank God, 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So the... It's describing there's a war, a warring in our members against, you know, against the law of my mind, trying to bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So there's a war going on in the, in our mind, in our soul realm, you know, trying to, trying to, us that are having free, trying to subject our mind, bring it into captivity to the law of, you know, of our members, the law of sin. And we have... Paul is trying to have us, re you know, when we reckon our 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 um our bodies dead, our flesh dead, and that's in um verse fourteen. No, verse eleven it says, "Right, we reckon ourselves dead unto sin, but alive unto God." When we do that, we are reminding ourselves of the reality we have in Christ that we are alive we're no longer dead okay we're no longer we no longer will serve our flesh or be bound to its whims and caprices because it died with Christ on the cross it was nailed to the cross so i like to think that um the old man the old man is governed by our flesh, right? It's governed by sin. It's it's ridden with sin. The sin nature is um is its law. Okay. It serves the law of sin, the old man. But the new man and now the carnal man, it's like it's trying to resurrect the old man. The carnal man, it's it's like it's they haven't renewed their mind, you know, um, by the spirit of God. 
you know, because the spirit of God quickens our mortal bodies, you know, it quickens us so that we may do the things that please the Lord. Um, we may think, think, um, set our minds on thoughts that are pleasing unto God, you know, on, set our mind on realities that are true um, and true of our identity in Christ. The carnal man sets his mind on the affairs of, on earthly affairs, on carnal, well, carnal affairs. The carnal, carnal mind is in enmity with God, right? So it's setting its mind on, on the things of the flesh. Um, it's trying to resurrect the old man, the old man that's been dead. So that's what, you know, carnality is, okay? So it's, it's fleshy, okay? So now we have to, the battle is in our mind, is in our soul realm. And I don't want anybody to be condemned. You know, there's no con condemnation. You know, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we are not after the flesh, right? We are not in the flesh, we are in the spirit because we've been born again. Okay, let's read 24. Um, read Romans 8. Chapter, no, chapter, verse 8. Says, um, sorry guys. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, Right? So anything, and when you are in the, your flesh, you can't please God. And the flesh, it does good things and bad things. You know, that we, um, we, well, I'm going to say we because we all descend from Adam and Eve, right? So we ate of the um, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, good and evil. So flesh, the flesh could manifest good things and bad things, seemingly good things, seemingly and of course, bad things. So, you know, so, but it's still the flesh, right? Anything done in the flesh is flesh. Anything done in the spirit is of the spirit. Okay. So it now says in verse nine, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay, so, you know, Paul already described that there is a war going on between flesh and our spirit. Um, and that anything of the flesh doesn't please God, right? Because even when the good you want to do, you don't want, you don't do it. You know, you, you, you want to do good. Even if, you, even if you do good for a while, it, it, the evil is so present, right? So the only one that, the only person that can deliver us from this, um, from this body of sin is Christ Jesus and by his spirit, you know, when we're born again, he went by the indwelling of his spirit. We now, you know, we're alive to God. We're raised up with Jesus, right? From the dead. So our flesh is dead. Our spirit is raised to life. Okay. Now I want to say that, when it says, um, the new man, okay, sorry, that new man is the reborn spirit, right? Okay, so the body is dead because of sin. That's our flesh. The flesh is dead because of sin, and that, and because Christ died, his sin, I mean, not his sin, the sin of of the whole world was placed on him and he died. So our flesh is reckoned dead with Christ. So you put your mind on that, that my flesh, when it, when it tries to rear, when it tries to 
come to like resurrect itself, you know, um, through um, temptations, we have to remember that no flesh, you're dead. You have no say in governing my life, okay? You have no say in, in, um, in me, in, I don't know how to say it. Like you just, like your flesh doesn't have a say because it's dead, you know, dead, you know, you know, dead men shouldn't be walking. I know we watch scary movies sometimes, but like dead men shouldn't be walking. Dead men are dead. They're still, they're lifeless. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be stirring it up, right? You can't, don't be resurrecting your flesh up. Now, I know people might say it's easier said than done. Well, by the spirit of God, he is the one that will subdue all the fleshly tendencies that might, you know, try to rise up in your life. Okay. And it, it's, it's, you know, we're serving God with the law of our mind, um, with our mind, right? You know, so, I mean, which is, you know, connected to our spirit. So, our mind, our soul, right? We want to serve God in our um, in the realm of our soul, in our mind. <laughs> oh, guys, I am. I'm sorry. Oh Lord, Lord, help me to get this out. Okay. Okay, let me continue. Let's go down to. Let's go to James. Let's go to James. James chapter um, 1, verse 12. Okay. It says, blessed, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. It says in another translation, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Right? Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Death. Then when lust, let me read it again. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. When it's finished or fully grown. So this highlights, you know, that we're drawn away in our mind, our soul realm, okay? So there's nothing good in our flesh, right? Everything is righteous and good and holy and perfect in our spirit, okay? So... We are, you know, of course, and God doesn't tempt us, right? And, you know, because he He can't be tempted. He doesn't tempt anyone to evil or, you know. Mm -mm. So God, so our spirit, we're not, so the temptation that occurs in our lives, it's not affecting our spirit. It's, it's being, it's coming through our fleshly desires, okay? So that's what tempts us, our soul to, you know, like our spirit, no, I'm sorry, the temptation from the enemy or even our flesh, our desires that just rise up, you know, in our body, right? Our spirits are not being tempted at all. It's our flesh. It's our flesh. It's our flesh that's rising up, that is whispering to our soul come and please me come and let's do this let's do that you know and your soul is like no i am it's it's being drawn it's also being drawn to god and you know his spirit is being wooed by god is being moved by his spirit so so the the war is happening in our mind okay now Galatians 5, verse 19. 
It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Um, lasciviousness is, uh, let me see. Well, it said in the other translation, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality. Okay, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Uh, variance is like, um, I think, jealousy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. I'm almost done. So, um, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, which is... um. Sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, envies, murders, drunkenness. Envies is like divisions. Okay. Um, and then orgies, which is revelings, and things like these. So, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, uh, they will not inherit the kingdom of, these things will not inherit the kingdom of God because they're of the flesh, right? They are, are you know, when we're glorified, your flesh is going to be changed. You're going to be changed into your glorified body. So, of course, all these things of the flesh are not going to be, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. This is not about, Oh, you practice this or practice that as a believer. This is, this, all these things belong to your flesh. Your flesh is the one that commits all these things. And all these works are destroyed. You know, Christ came to destroy all these works in you. So these are going to be done away with at the time of transfiguration. Now, in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and with its affections and lusts, okay, or which is with its passions and desires, okay? So, and it says, um, so, the, so there's no law against these, right? Because... I mean, the Spirit of God dwells in you. I mean, and He is He's He's good. He is holy. There's no law against the Spirit of God, right? That will, and He's and His fruit that's being manifested in your life. So, in Christ, we have crucified the flesh. So it's just reiterating that all those works of the flesh they've been crucified. Right, they're not held to your account, okay. That's the old, that's the old man, that's the flesh, and he has no say, okay. So, because we live in the spirit, we walk in the spirit, we are of the spirit, we are after the spirit, we're born of God, okay. Now, um. Being okay, guys. I I feel like this is very like I'm not making sense, but the Lord is saying the Lord is saying, um, I should continue. I'm sorry if I've confused you guys. So I'm gonna continue. It's really hard, but anyway. So. First John chapter three, verse eight to nine. It says, He that committed committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay. So the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, so that we so God can reconcile us to himself through Jesus Christ, you know. And the works of the devil had to be destroyed. Sin had to be crucified. It had to be destroyed completely. You know, Christ, who fulfilled the law, now did away with it because the law, you know, it, it really highlights 
our sin nature. So he fulfilled it, lived a perfect life because he's God and he abolished the law in so doing. You know, so he, he, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the whole law. Okay. And now we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not under the law, we're under grace. You know, so in his grace, we fulfill the whole law. You know, in Christ, we fulfill the whole law. You know, we are now in right standing before God. Okay. So he destroyed the works of the devil. So that sin, we don't have to serve the law of sin. So sin will not reign in our lives. Will not reign. Not that we won't, sin will not be present in our lives here and there because we still have this flesh. But it's not going to, it's not going to have dominion over us. It's not going to rule us. We're not going to be governed by it. Our sin nature will be removed, has been removed as a believer. It has been removed in our lives. Hallelujah. So it goes on to say in verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So he cannot sin. I know some translation says he doesn't practice sin. No, it's not about practicing or not practicing. He does not sin. That's the spirit. Your spirit doesn't sin. And that's the real you. That's the true you. Because we were once, the old, na old man was who we were before. But we have to be born again. And when you're born again, the old man has to die. He's dead. The flesh is dead. The old man has died. So that new life can come out by his spirit. The spirit has now, his seed is in us. So that seed has is 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 generating is that life and you know and we'll the seed you know like like you know you know seed like sperm and egg and all of that so seed is like the life of god so it's it remains in us you know we have eternal life it's, it remains in us, the spirit of god indwells us we are born again once we believe the gospel of jesus christ so that's regenerated spirit in us doesn't sin and can never sin and that's the real you and that real you will be manifested at the time of our glorification because that's the real us but we're encased still in this body of this flesh body right this incor this corruptible body we're going to have to put on incorruption that will is it so that that's commensurate with our regenerated spirit, with our spirit man. Okay, so this is just emphasizing that it's not you that's sinning when you like when you sin. If a believer sins, it's not you, the real you. It's not your spirit that's committing that sin. It's your flesh. It's your flesh. That old man that tries to rear its ugly head from from time to time. Okay, okay, but we have to reckon it dead and tell it like, yo, you are dead. Stay down, right? You know, you know, and, and that is as we fix our mind, you know, when we, in our mind, setting it on Christ, fixing our eyes on Christ, setting our hearts on the reality of who we are in Jesus. That man, that old man, that flesh stays down. It's subdued. It's subdued. And the Spirit of God helps us in that. Okay? So now in Ephesians 4, um, it says, it talks about, um, it says, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, in verse 22, the old man. So that's our former you know, the conversation, sorry, my video is about to stop. Okay, so it says, which is corrupt, the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we're supposed to put, this is in our mind, we'll put off the old old man and put on the new man. So our soul is just to, to reckon our, our old man dead, and then we're like, okay, our new man, I'm, I've been, I'm been born again, I'm, I am born again, I'm, I am a new creation in Christ. We know in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new crea- creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we have to keep that in mind. You know, understand that we are a new creation. We, we That new creature doesn't sin. It's the old man. So don't beat yourself up if you know you see sin. Just reckon yourself to say that's been done away with on the cross. I've been forgiven. You know, I am new in Christ. Praise the Lord. Oh, I love you guys. Take care.